Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The victory is yours, Lord. Amen. The battle belongs to you, Lord. Amen. We know that you're riding on the storms of our lives. Hallelujah. Nothing can faze you. How many of us are glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. How many of us are glad to know Jesus tonight? Remember what pastor said on Sunday, don't pat a cake him. Come on. Yeah. If you are glad, let us praise him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let us acknowledge his presence for the word of God says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. Yeah. Jesus Christ said that. And we ought, by faith, to appro appropriate his presence. He's here. You would not see him with your open eyes. And no, it's not me. I'm not he. <laughs> but he's here. And if he's here tonight, he's here to bless. If he's here tonight, well, as he's here tonight, not if, he's here to heal. We need to look. We need to look or take a different look at what the scripture said. We need to get out of the mold we are accustomed to. Thinking that we are coming to hear a message and that is that. Or we came to worship and that is that. The word of God said, not me, not the pastor of the church. No one is here attempting to pull wool over your eyes. You know your Bible. He is in the midst. Amen? Amen? Let's stand and give him a hand of praise and a shout of praise. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise you, yeah. Lord. Praise you, yeah. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Praise your holy name. Praise your wonderful name. Praise your victorious name. Praise you, wonderful Lord. Hallelujah. Glorious Lord. Glorious, wonderful Lord. We praise your name. We praise your name. Hallelujah, Lord. We magnify, Lord Jesus. You are our King. You are our God. You are our Lord. And we give praise and glory unto your name. For you are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now, Lord Jesus, speak to us by your spirit. Speak to our hearts and open our eyes, O God. So that we would realize, Lord, your glory in us. For you are in the midst of us. Be magnified this night, we pray. And we thank you, wonderful Father, in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. Tonight, I don't want to preach this message. I want to exhort us. And I'm not, I said us. I'm exhorting us all. I'm exhorting the church of Jesus Christ, of which we are a part. So I want to stay as quiet as the Holy Spirit will keep me because it is important for us to understand how God is moving and how he intends to move tonight. Mark chapter 5. Did I say Mark? Okay, forgive me. I have Matthew, but I will do Mark first. Let's see. Mark chapter 5, verse 27. So it's Matthew, Mark. So it's the one after. You won't have to go too far. This account is the account of the woman with the issue of blood. This account is one with which we are familiar. I have ministered in it. I've heard it ministered many times. 
reference has been made to it. Tonight the Lord wishes to speak to us from that experience that he had on the road to Capernaum going to heal Jairus' daughter. Mark chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 27. Let's back up to verse 25. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him and touched his garment. For she said, if I, may, if, I, if I may touch, but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And, imme and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng in thee, and seest thou who touched me? And he looked around about and see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what, she had, what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him the truth. The truth being how she was suffering for these years and etc., etc. And she heard of him and she said, if I would come and touch but the, ha the hem of his garments. So she told him the truth. And having told her the truth, she said, Jesus said unto her, Daughter, thy fate had made thee whole, Go in peace, and be whole of your plea. I want to talk to us about being kept from Jesus. It's a strange title. But I want you to consider it because we, we talk about Jesus being here. And I know many of us will say, well, Brother Glenn, if I see Jesus, you know, I will worship him. I will. But we won't see him by our eyes. We have to see him by faith. Amen? Amen? So here we began today talking that Jesus Christ is here. No, he's not Brother Lyndon. He's not the sister. He's not me. He's here. He's here by spirit. He's here in us through his Holy Spirit. He's in our midst. We would read that scripture very soon. As a matter of fact, let's turn to it one time. It is Matthew 18, 18 to 20. Let's turn to Matthew 18, 18 to 20. I want you to read it for yourselves, although you may have read it before. Matthew 18, verses 18 to 20. Verse 18 said, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you, two, shall agree on earth as touching anything, is that in your Bible? Come on, it's your Bible. Is, your Bible. is anything in your Bible? If two of you shall agree on earth as touching or regarding, concerning anything, Read the next part of it. Anything that you shall ask, it 
shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So we know we possess the Holy Spirit of God. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Am I speaking to temples here? We are temples of the Holy Spirit of God. Yet Jesus is speaking about his presence in our midst. Amen? Stay with me. I want to develop the theme, what's keeping us from Jesus. And I, I want to use the account of the woman with the issue of blood for us to examine ourselves and ask, what is keeping us from him? What is keeping us from him? He being so accessible, he being so faithful, he being so loving, he is, he is, he is there desiring to do the will of the Father on our behalf. What is keeping us from him? From experiencing his power, from experiencing the answers that we of the things that we have for him, have of him, particularly healing, deliverance, and any victory in any area that have been where we have been oppressed, where we have been struggling, he is here. Someone say he's here. He's here. I say that do you mean it? Say he's here. It will take a while sometimes when we are careless about things to start to get careful. We need to be careful of that thought. It does take a while. Sometimes we are creatures of habit. We, we attend meetings, and church is just one of those meetings. And it would be the trick of the devil to cause us to come into church with the same attitude. We just attended the meeting. But... To attend a meeting where Jesus is has to be something different. Somebody say me. To attend a meeting and Jesus is there is two things. Either you didn't believe he was there, you didn't see him, or you don't know who he is. I've been mem I have, I'm a fellow member of this church, like most of you, you are my brethren, and I know you know who Jesus is. Amen. So we rule out that one. Is it possible that um, you don't believe he's here? <coughs> and that's what you and I have to examine in our mind. Do we believe? I want to say again, I'm not speaking or bringing up anything that I don't think you have heard about or that you have not heard about before. I'm not saying anything that is far-fetched, that is too difficult. I don't think I'm preaching deep. But I want to say by the Spirit of God to us, to me myself too, not, not, that's what I'm saying, preaching to me too, that we tend to get into a mold and into a form. <coughs> and after we, sing, I mean, after we finish singing and uh, worship, we sit down and listen and then go home. You think that's what Jesus came for? Now I know you probably just came to listen to the message. But I want us to ask ourselves, what is Jesus doing here? What do you really came for? No, he did not say what he came for. So we can, among ourselves, come to the conclusion or ask him, Lord, why are you here? If you ask Jesus that, what do you think he will say? He's here to see how you're behaving. He's here to do what? He's here to bless us. This is why, and he said that immediately after he said, if two or three of you shall, uh, shall agree concerning anything that you shall ask. It will be done of my Father because I am in your midst. Uh, that's how I paraphrase it. Because we are two or three are God, I am there. Do you, uh, this, this takes a getting hold of. Uh, this takes this takes a, a wrestling with. For one reason, we have not always seen church like that. And many times when we sit in church, we are so concerned with what we lack, concerned with even our weaknesses or failures, 
that we, we, we tend to dismiss or not look at the real weight and the purpose of, us, of assembling ourselves together in the presence of the Lord and benefiting from it immensely, not only through the wisdom of the word of God, not only through the teaching of the word of God, not only through the faith that comes to the word of God, but realizing that Jesus is here for a purpose. We read the account of the woman with the issue of blood. And we, were fam we are familiar with it. We want to just quickly look at some points out of it. This person has an issue. The woman of the issue of blood was not given a name in, this, in the Bible. And, and quite rightly so. Because she could represent all of us. Amen? And men, if, don't mind, it was a woman with the issue of blood, um, we too can appropriate to ourselves. Now, we may not have an issue of blood. We may not have the same condition that the woman had. But I always think that it is very instructive in this particular account in the Bible that it, the word issue is used. Anybody ever have issues? <laughs> Anybody here have an issue? Yes. We all have issues. And that's why I think that this account is particularly interesting that it was described that way. She didn't say that she was seeing her, her uh, periods for too long. Didn't say she was hemorrhaging, although that is what we understood. It is couched in a language that makes, makes it e very easy for us to draw a parallel or to, or to, or to draw a, an example for ourselves. She had an issue. She had the issue for a long time. Any one of us have an issue for a long time? She, had, she was bleeding for 12 years. I won't burden you with the, with the Levitical law that made her feel outcast as a result of her condition. She was a Jew, and the law stated that if she was having a, an issue or a bleeding past three days or anything unusual, that she should go to the priest concerning it, and the priest will declare her to be unclean. So it's not only that she had a private matter, but other people get to find out. Any one of us have a private issue? Probably you thought nobody knew it, and then before you realize it, somebody get to find out. You tried to keep it quiet. You didn't want to broadcast it. It's your issue. Nothing wrong. Nobody says you should broadcast the issue. It's just the circumstances of her life cause her to have had her issue exposed to the priests and they. So she had this issue. It made her unclean as a result. So she had an unclean reputation for 12 years. Clearly she wasn't married. She was not married. Because a Jewish, a Jewish man will not marry an unclean woman. So she had no husband. For 12 years she had this plague and she couldn't get rid of it. She had this reputation of uncleanness in this society. So she was shunned by others. So she was in a very desperate situation. She was very pressed herself. She couldn't do like everyone else. She couldn't attend public functions. She couldn't be part of life. She had to be withdrawn. She had to withdraw herself and stay away for 12 years.
For 12 years, she carried around the infirmity. You know, there are some ads on cable television for diseases. And interestingly, they, they caricature them. They make some kind of caricature of it. And they, and they have the persons dragging them around. So wherever you go, you have this thing dragging around you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Have one for mucinic. I just love that one. I do one for cold when the box falls on him and scratch him. I just like that. But many people, whatever, you, whatever is your disease, Mirabetrix is a drug, and then you have this for the weak bladder, and you have this big bladder that thing walk all the way. The woman go, this bladder thing is behind her. And interestingly, it was almost so for this woman with the issue of blood. And interestingly for us with our issue, wherever we go, we know it. We may not have told the brother, we may not have told the sister, but we have an issue. And it's burden. It's burdensome. It's burdensome. It's burdensome. So she could not be afforded to do it anyone else. No one else could have helped her. She was not fit for society. Do you understand what is happening to this woman? She had an issue. Now your issue and my issue may not have left us in so dire a circumstance where we are not fit for society. We have an issue, but we could run around with our issue. <laughs> our issue is not so heavy. But in her case, look, look what it was and for how long. Her response. So she had this issue. What was her response? What did she do? According to your account, she tried many things. Everybody gave her a recipe. From, what is the little fine leaf? That, the green little fine leaf there? From, huh? <laughs> Come on. Are you on a call? For, from Moringa. <laughs> Everybody gave her an issue. Take some Moringa. <laughs> Take it with some all-in-one. Get black sage. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if black sage were in those days. But, but, and she would try it. She would try it because this thing, what I described before, had her virtually ostracized, if I may use that term. She suffered many things of many physicians. She went by some good ones. No doubt she went by some bogus ones. She, if you, if, if you, if you research this text and you read the description of the cures that they were given in the Talmud, the Talmud is a Jewish, an old Jewish um, 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 scripture or, 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 or writing, uh, a, rabbinic, a rabbinical writing that interpret all the customs and so on with Jews. And when they tell you the cures and how she had to do this and do that and drink her glass of wine and sit down in a drain and somebody had to come behind her and frighten her. She suffered all kinds of things. Put it to our issue. You have an issue. And they tell you, go here, go there. Go and see so and so. Go and see. Go, go carry that. All kinds of things we do to get rid of our issue. Not so? Yes. Not so? Yes. I hope none of us go Moruga. Anybody know it? <laughs> I, I, I hope that is not in our... No one exhorts us to go Moruga. Or Kunupia. I, I don't know what they have in those places. But I think you laugh so you understand what. But what I'm saying is that when you have your issue, you try all kind of thing. She spent all that she had. She was desperate. She had many, many failures, but this thing was so bothering that she had to get it out. She spent it. What if you come and tell her to go Capernaum, she gone. Go, 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 go. Go Galilee, she go. She spent all. Get rid of that issue. That was her response. She desperately sought help wherever she was told. 
What was the result from all her efforts? She was never bettered. In fact, she became worse and was even pauperized by her condition. To the extent that I believe that having lost all her funds, there might have been some bright Jewish guy, doctor who qualified in Damascus and set up practice in Jerusalem, and when they were told her about him, he, she couldn't go because he's expensive. You know, you, you know how doctors are. No offense to any doctors in the, uh, in the congregation. I know my friend is a, is a doctor. No offense. <laughs> so he just qualified, he bright. And somebody tell her, well, he, 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 he qualified in Damascus, and they good. Go and see him. She had no more money. She spent all that she had. So her condition was dire because she didn't have the resources left to help herself. And she was getting worse, weaker and weaker, and her issue was having a toll on her. But something changed. Help me preach. Say something changed. Something changed. She heard about Jesus. When she heard about Jesus, that changed it for her. The word of God did not say exactly what she heard. If you read the scripture or the accounts, both in Matthew, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke have the account of this. In the same chapter, Jesus had just heal the guy in the, in the gatherings who had the legion of demons and who after, after the demons asked that they be sent into the swine he gave them leave to go into the swine and thousands of swines were killed in the sea and the people from the coast begged him that he should leave because he wrecked the economy no more pork, no more ham so why do you think they tell him to leave? Christmas coming and no more harm, huh? <laughs> so when that guy asked Jesus when he was going in the boat that I would come with you, Jesus said, no, you stay here and show what great things the Lord had done for you. Read the account. And it was said immediately, in the verse immediately after, that the fame of what he did was noise abroad. Uh, he got in the ship and went to the other side to Capernaum. That's where he was with this woman, issue of blood, and that's where Jairus came and uh, met him. So he left where he was and he came over. And the boats were going to and fro. So the news that was being published, what great thing was done to this man who for years was in the tombs cutting himself. No man could tame him with no chains. And his reputation was known as a madman in the tombs. And they heard Jesus tame him. And he sat down at Jesus' feet like a little child. She must have heard that. I, I refer to it because it's in the same chapter. But who knows what she has heard. Because not only the miracles that are recorded in the word of God that Jesus do. John said many, many other miracles that I, I suppose to use John's word. That if the books, if all were written, there would be not enough books to contain them. So Jesus was healing people of their diseases and doing wonderful miracles. Be among the miracles he did in Capernaum and in Tyre and Sidon and in Bethsaida and they were not believers. He even come up, um, pronounced war unto them. Read it. War unto you, Tyre and Sidon. For if, if, if the mighty works that were done in you were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented. So, so Jesus did many things. The, the few accounts we read here were written for a reason and for a purpose. And as the word of God says, whatsoever things are written aforetime are written for our knowledge so that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, will have hope. So this was written for our understanding, for our learning. It can't write everything. You'd be sitting down only reading stories all over and over. 
and he wants us to just to draw from the examples that have been written so that it will impact our lives and our relationship with him. Amen? Amen. So she heard about Jesus and that changed it for her. So she believed what she heard about Jesus. For she said in her heart, well, if this man has done that, well then, he can heal me. Bring it home to us. We know of Jesus. We know all that he has done. We know that he was sent to be our savior, to be our redeemer, to be our deliverer. And he did it miraculously on the cross and he rose and he have, we, have, we are beneficiaries of his salvation. He said it and he did it. We know that. Amen? But he also said something. He said, come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. It's a text we always use for people who are unsaved. So, okay, if you're unsaved, you come to Jesus. But if you have another problem, you to, I don't know who you go to, because there are no other savior. <laughs> Amen? It, so this is how we do it. We, we, we apportion that for salvation, meaning... That if you heavy laden in sin and thing, and you were like, oh, Brother Glenn was, you need Jesus. <laughs> that is what that text for. No. Jesus has given an invitation. And if you go back to the context where, in which Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. It was not in any particular context. It is one of those general declarations that he made when he declared that no man knows the Father and all power has been given unto me of the Father and no one knows the Father but the Son. And then he said, come unto me. He made this declaration. So my message to us tonight is what is keeping us from Jesus? Why are we kept away from Jesus? Why, why are we not receiving what Jesus has for us. Now I hear some of you say, Brother Glenary, Jesus have it for me, and Jesus love me, he could give me. Let me make one thing, one thing abundantly clear for us. That this is a spiritual relationship. This is a spiritual relationship with God and man. The way to access God is through faith or belief. It is that connection. Faith is the connection that you and I have to make to receive from God. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't sit down there feeling faithless and wondering that you have to go somewhere else to faith. You have to understand how to use the faith that you have. It is like God is a power station or the power source of everything. Look at the, electri the electricity here. The electricity that we are using here is not produced here. It's produced somewhere else. And it is distributed through wires. And if you want to get some, you need to get your wire Connected. Come on. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. No, not illegally. You're a pity and take No, some people have illegal connection. We, we won't go there. You need to get your wire. Uh, whose wire you have to get? Yours. Come on, answer me. Whose wire must be connected? Yours. Not the pastor's wire. Not the preacher's wire. Come on, connect your own wire. Amen? Yes. Your wire has to be connected. Right. And then you will get what? Current. <laughs> you will get power, you will get what you need. Many times, a lot of Christians believe, yes, God has given gifts to people, and through the Holy Spirit of God, they function in those gifts. Healing would be one of those gifts. Miracles would be one of those gifts. But the gifts do not function where there is no faith. I want to say this. The gifts cannot function where there is no faith. If I stand here and through the Spirit of God, 
I lay hands on about 20 people. All were infirmed and all get healed. You know what will be your reaction? Or oh, everybody react. Everybody come in by Brother Glenroy. I know you don't want to see amen. What I'm saying is that we look to see who we believe <laughs> have the anointing, uh, as you might say. And we come by them. <laughs> you understand? Because their anointing or their power will work. But in our hearts, we don't believe. You quickly quote the scripture and say, but Brother Glenroy, and that is what happened in the scripture. And, and when Paul do, and when Peter do, and they do this. Remember, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. It happened, but it was through the Spirit of God. It was by the Spirit of God. It wasn't like what we see on television, where some people, they buy a couple bolts of cloth by Yuffies. They cut it up, they, what do you call them, prayer cloth. And, 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 every, and every hundred you send, they post it up for you, with a little oil in the corner, wholesale cloth, and they say it's anointed. And then we, well, other people buy into that. What I'm saying to us is that God search our hearts and our faith is how we honor God. Many times we say we honor him, but we do it with our lips. But if we are to receive the mercies of God, we ought to honor him and he knows our heart. If we do not believe him, we do not honor him because we do not believe his word. How could you honor someone and not Believe their word. He said that I am here to heal you. He said so. But you don't believe. You look at Brother Glenn and say, nah, he's sweating too much. Or you look at some other brother and say, okay, he is the one. But Jesus said, I am here. Amen. Our responsibilities as ministers of the word is to point you to Jesus Amen. and to function through the Holy Spirit so that your faith with which you would seek God would materialize or redound to your healing or to your blessing. And I'm saying this to put us right because I begin by saying Jesus is here. But you're not going to see him. He sent me to preach because I've been appointed to preach tonight. So that if Jesus is here to heal you and when they are singing the praises and worshiping him you're not interested in that. Or as pastor said on Sunday, you pat a cake in the Lord. Now God knows how you can praise him. He knows your heart. So he knows the extent to which you are praising him fervently or not. Amen? Amen. Now, I may see you pat a cake in and probably that's all you can do. But God knows that. Because he knows when you go to a football match or to cricket in the oval, when Brian Lara hit a six, you just do the same thing. <laughs> right? So he knows. That's your limit. But if when you go to Brian Lara in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the oval, you put up your hand and you're, oh, this C6. <laughs> he knows you're capable of more. He knows you are capable of more. It's not for me to judge you and say how much you should do. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose is to encourage you to let your faith express before the one who you serve. Honor him in that way. That's the purpose. Don't, don't look at it as somebody criticizing how you do. No, 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 it's not that. Because if that's what you can do, that's what you can do. So this is the situation with the woman with the issue of blood. She believed what she heard of Jesus. She believed all the wonderful miracles that, she, that he had wrought. She believed that his power was sufficient to heal her also. And she was determined to be healed by him. Nothing dissuaded her. She consulted with no one in her heart. She made her decision. Many times if we will make our decision concerning Christ in our heart, he would see it for that is an act of faith. And many times, even in responding to an altar call or probably whatever it is, we would do it because we are, re, we, are re, we are being 
pointed to Christ, we are relating to Christ, we are accepting what is said of him, and we are giving him the honor and the glory. So we need to understand it, for it's so important for us to benefit from that which he wants us to have. We sang the song, the victory is yours. You're riding on the storm. Your name is unfailing. We sang it. We sang it that Jesus is warring for us. How does Jesus war for us? When we war on earth. When we war, when we bind on earth, it is bound where? If we don't bind on earth, what is not happening? Nothing by it. He has given the authority to us. I know we don't feel so because we, we just get saved and we just come into church. But I have said if there's one thing we need to understand is that our salvation is a calling. Where he has chosen us, he has given us the faith to believe and he has called us on to glory. He has called us to accomplish for him. That's what he has. Just as how we have called Peter, James, and John to accomplish for him, so he has called you and I to accomplish for him. Amen, Brother Glenroy, that's true. Come on. Hey, don't, the, the enemy of our souls will like you to feel it. Not me, I just. <laughs> you know how we say of ourselves, I just. <laughs> I, I not much, Brother Glenn, that is for you. Your voice big, I can't talk like you. But God didn't call only Brother Glenroy. He called us too. And he called us so that we would be beneficiaries of all that he desires to do in the earth over his enemies. Do you understand what we're saying? So that we need to understand that it is, we can stay how we are. We are welcome to stay how we are. But you would lose out on the victory. You would lose out on the glory. Your life will not redound to anything for anybody. You are saved for yourself. And hopefully you are, you are making it. And then at the end, you will make it, hopefully. But nobody is benefiting from your life. There is no fruit. Fruit is not for the tree. Fruit is for somebody else who visits the tree, not so. So if people come by you, they get nothing. You understand, right? I mean, is that what God called us for? Certainly not. But there is a spirit of inhibition. There is a trick of the enemy to deceive us out of our birthright and make us feel, no man, leave that for them. You're not in ministry. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. You're the temple of the living God. You're a possessor of the spirit of God. And the day you wake up in your own room, and that realization moved from your heart, your head, to your heart. It will change your life. Amen. And this is the purpose of this message tonight. What has kept us from Jesus? The account went on with, with the woman with the issue of blood. She decided, well, look, I have this shame and this reputation. I can't stand up and go and ask them nothing. I can't, they, they wouldn't even make me reach Jesus. But because of her inabilities, because of her infirmities, because of her shame, nothing dissuaded her. She came up with an alternative plan. You see Peter and them there? I, I don't want Peter to see me, no? Because he's not easy. I will go on pass behind his back. And I will go through between the, and I am going to, do you understand? She came up with her own determination to make a contact with the master because she believed, based on what she has heard, that his power could heal her also. And she needed to be? That's the important thing. You see, remember I told you she was outcast from society. Her issue for 12 years, she didn't want it anymore. Some of us probably, we could, we could go on so. We could just keep taking the prescription the, the doctor gave us, you understand? And well, we're not the only one take the prescription. You're not the only one. And hopefully one day, thing will work out. 
Is that what Jesus wants? Is that what Jesus is here for? Is that what Jesus died for? What is keeping us? Nothing kept the woman with the issue of blood. What is keeping us? What? There is a press. There was a crowd, not so? There were disciples and there were other people thronging him. She was outcast. She was unclean. She wasn't fit to be among them because of her circumstance. And everybody know that. She was ashamed. But she also saw this was my salvation. <laughs> Look him going there. I'm going to get to him. If tonight, saints of God, or if ever we as the people of God could truly see Jesus as all we need, change our attitude. And we will devise our plan that nothing will keep us from him. And we will go and receive from him what he has to give to us and what he died to give to us and what he wants to give to us. Do you understand that? We need to move it from the head to the heart. We need to forget the religious things that we've always been doing and hearing and doing and hearing. Wait, let's wake up and say, wait a minute, that is me they're talking about. Lord Jesus is me, you sure? Not Matthew, not Levi, not Peter, me. Once you and I come to that conclusion, once we realize, no, I'm not saying you're perfect. Hold on with the perfect part. Hold on with the perfect part. I'm not saying to be comfortable in your imperfection. The word of God says that God desires that all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. If you study that text, you could be saved and not come to the knowledge of the truth. You could be a child of God, but you have not come to the knowledge of the truth of Christ in you and the truth of the Spirit of God in you. So you need to come to the knowledge of the truth, although you're being saved. He said that if you continue in the, doctrine, in the doctrine, then you will know the truth. You have to continue, and then the truth will make you free. There is a truth that we need to come into as Christians. Somebody say amen. Yeah. So I know you love the Lord. I know you are saved. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying that you're bad. That's not the issue. The issue is God wants us to come into the truth of what he has for us. Somebody say amen. Yeah. This is what we need to do. And this is what I meant, what is keeping us from Jesus. We are faithful in coming to church. Look at tonight. We are faithful in attending. But we have issues. And he has the answer. Amen? Amen. Let me see if I can wrap this up now. Amen. She came to Jesus even without the invitation. Come unto me, all you a heavy burden or heavy laden. If you, believe, if you accept the chronology, this statement was made in Matthew chapter 11. The woman with the issue of blood was done in Matthew chapter 9. I know, we, I know we read Mark 5. So that is in Matthew chapter, is after, after the woman with the issue of blood, Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 11 and said, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. Saints, our invitation to Jesus comes, our invitation to Jesus comes when we believe the word of the Lord, when we believe what is said of Jesus. Many times, we hear it and we take it with the proverbial pinch of salt. And in this way, we dishonor God. Yeah, we, we tell God, I don't really believe that. That is for me. So whatever is being preached is for somebody else, not me. I am more important than that. I don't have to bow to that. So you see how we dishonor him. Please be very careful with unbelief. It's not something we should be... We should fight unbelief in our hearts. We would all have it. We all have to wrestle with it. But we need to fight against it. You know, we, it, is, it, is, it is folly for us to sit proud and comfortable thinking that it's okay for me not to believe. It's not okay, my friends. He received, no, sorry. Isaiah prophesied that by his stripes we will heal. In 1 Peter 2, 4, he said, Who in his own self bore our sins? His own self, he bore that. And by whose stripes we are healed, 2 Peter 2.24. Jesus received the stripes. Jesus received the stripes. Was Jesus received the stripes? Did Jesus receive stripes? Yes. Well, then we are healed. Amen. 
You see, he received the nail in his hand and we are saved. Amen? Amen. He received the stripes, but then we are healed. We ought to claim our healing. We ought to receive our healing. His stripes were not received in vain. They were not a formality. They were of necessity. Our necessity. Our healing. Somebody say amen. amen. The stripes Jesus bore were for our healing. Our necessity. That's why he bore them. It's not well somebody had to beat him up. The stripes that Peter got were not the stripes that Jesus got. The, the stripes that Stephen and them got were not the stripes that Jesus got. Jesus was prophetically declared that his stripes were for the healing. Those who are to receive miracles from Christ must honor him. I think you have heard the expression, there's an elephant in the room. Anyone knows that expression? It's an interesting expression. You hear it a lot listening to cable TV. And it's a metaphor that says there's an obvious truth that is being ignored or it goes unaddressed. Is Jesus the elephant in the room tonight? I hate to refer to my Lord as an elephant. But there's an obvious truth that is not addressed. The truth that he is here to heal us is not being addressed. The expression could also mean it's an obvious problem or risk that no one wants to talk about. We just don't talk about it. We don't talk about the fact that we are not being productive in, 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 in Jesus Christ. We don't talk about it that we are not seeing the breakthrough. We don't, the elephant is there. There is no breakthrough, but we don't talk about it. What I'm saying to us by the Spirit of God tonight is let's talk about the elephant in the room. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, don't push it under the carpet because this is for us. Remember I said he has received the stripes already. He has received the stripes. He bore it for our salvation. Inherent in that is the healing of our bodies. I'm going to submit tonight as I close. The woman with the issue of blood only heard about Jesus. And if you think it was her alone, the man with the palsy, whose friends led him down through the roof unto Jesus, they were not invited to the meeting either. Look what the fate of the man's friend were. Boy, Jesus is inside their teaching. They try to get in, and there's no way in. They say, uh -uh, you're not leaving here, so let us let you down through the ceiling. Wow. Amen? What I'm saying is that nothing kept them from Jesus. What is keeping us? You see, they believe that Jesus wasn't there. And interestingly, if I read that text, he was, he was speaking to the scribes, the Pharisees, the doctors of the law, and he was speaking to many of them. And strangely, that's where the word of God said, the power of God was there to heal them. Now, I ask myself, why this is the only place it was mentioned that the power of God was there to heal them? When the power of God is wherever Jesus was, not so? Yeah. But they, they, it was mentioned to show that although they were sitting in church, although they were, were listening to Jesus, although they were most prominent in the, in, the, in the congregation, they did not receive because they did not believe. What I'm saying to us is we could be prominent in church. We could attend, but let us not attend church and not receive. The, if you read the account, go back and read it. His friends say, no, no, no. You sick? We have to get you to Jesus. Let's try the door on the left. They say, no room here. Let's try the door on the back. No room here. Let's try the door. Okay, then. I no door. It have a roof. We'll move it. Amen. And what Jesus say? Oh, great is your feet. Are you going to move? Are you going to move the roof over your life tonight? Whatever your situation for your breakthrough. As the choir comes, we are going to be praying tonight for healing. And I want you, if you have a sickness in your body, to come to the altar tonight. Believe in God. In faith, believe in God. Come and the prayer of faith in the name of Jesus will enable us to receive that which we have for us. Could you stand and you can come. Don't, don't, don't make it a simidimi. Don't make no long thing about it. You know you're not feeling good in your body. You should have been here first. Don't look at who coming. You just be dead talk about faith. Don't, you're not coming to me. You're not coming to me. The word of God said, let us touch Jesus tonight. 
how you touch him, Brother Glenroy? By faith. Simply believing. Come on. Simply believing. Those of you all to bow your heads and close your eyes, don't look at me. Do not. I will only lead you or guide you. You have come in response to the word of the Lord. You've come in response to the word of the Lord. It is his word that he was wounded for your transgressions. Jesus was bruised for your iniquity. You have received him and you have received the forgiveness. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. And by his stripes you were healed. Now you ought to receive the healing. It is spiritual. It is you coming to Jesus. It is you accepting his word. Jesus is able to deliver. It is not of him to be able to do. It is for us to make that connection simply by faith. You are the altar. Just lift one hand slightly. Close your eyes. Declare this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your faithfulness. We know, Lord, I know, Lord, that you are able to heal me, to deliver me, and to set me free. From this, from this disease in your mighty name, your mighty name. And, I and I thank you for that I thank you that you bore the stripes I thank you that you sent your word I thank you that you're here to accomplish it I now touch you Lord Jesus by faith I touch you Lord Jesus I touch your garment Lord I touch your hand, Lord. I hug you, Lord. Deliver me from this disease, Lord. In your mighty name. For you are my salvation. And I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you for healing. I thank you for deliverance. I thank you for your blood. I thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am healed. I am healed. I am delivered. I am delivered. I'm set free. I am set free. In the name. In the name. In the name. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let me pray for you. Father, these are your people, Lord, who have received your word. And we thank you, Lord, for revealing your heart again to us. They have come in response to your word, Lord. And like the woman with the issue, Lord, they have come, Lord, because they need a healing. And we thank you, Jesus, for you are faithful. And we know that none that come unto you will be ashamed. And so, Father, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for manifesting your power and your glory in the lives of everyone at this altar tonight. And in your name, Lord Jesus, and by the power of your spirit, I decree and declare total healing and total wholeness in their bodies. Whatever disease, whatever infirmity in these bodies tonight, in the name of Jesus, I cancel it, I break its power, and I declare that they are free and made whole in Jesus' name. And Father, we say, be magnified, O Lord. 
to you we give the glory to you we give come on to you we give the glory to you we give the glory lord it is you who are here to heal it is you who are here to deliver just as you saved us lord so you will heal us lord and we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you As you go back, as you go back, don't, 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 don't put in your mind is only that. That's all you need. The faith. The faith connects it. That's all you need. You don't need no simidi me. Every time Jesus healed, he told them, your faith has made you whole. What did he do? He never said, my hand has made you whole. He said, your faith has made you whole. This is indicative of the fact that we will through our faith, access what God has for us. And Father, we thank you. I bless them in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only believe. Hallelujah. Only believe. I know they want to sing, but I want to say this to us tonight. We are in a revival mode in this church. And we heard from our pastor on Sunday. He described two types of revival. He spoke about the revival of the heart. Tonight, as we stand here, every one of us commit ourselves to a different heart, a different thinking, concerning God in our lives, concerning his word in our lives. And I was sharing with Brother Tommy before we came out that the Lord has showed me today. He said, I want you, son, when you pray to me, to believe that I have answered you. I want every one of us here to stop being the way we used to be in other church, praying and wondering if God will hear you. That is not faith. And the word of God says, everything that is not of faith is what? Is what? Sin. So when you and I stand to pray before God, and in our hearts we will doubt God, we are actually praying and sinning. Tonight, we have moved from that mode. There is no reason that God will not answer you. God has nothing against you except the controversy he would reveal to you by his by spirit. God has always revealed himself to us. And it is the controversy that's standing in the way, not God. So whatever you know of God, once we stand praying in the name of Jesus, always know that we have the petition that we ask of God. In Jesus' name, we will see the victory. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless. You may have your seats.